All right, we just got our upper bearings in and the pins. Let's see. So here's the hole. As you can see, there's a chunk missing on the original ones. I made another set at 90 degrees since Haas will not sell that. Um, here's the pin that broke. So basically all that does is I'll thread in there and it'll end up going through into the draw bar. <clears throat> so we got two pins. I got my upper bearings here. Two high precision bearings. Um, basically what it'll be it'll go on to this upper shoulder here. Um, we'll get a bearing here. We got a spacer stack. We'll stick the other bearing on there. It'll stack up kind of like that. Um, it's got a, we call it a compression collar or a compression nut. Basically that'll go on there like that and that will what hold it on here. Basically what I do, I'll stick the bearings on, get them nice and set. It's kind of a nice, tighter, light pressed fitting. Um, I got a little cap that I use here to, to press them. Basically it's just a piece of stock that'll go over and then get it onto the race. Um, but that'll just, those will just tap down and I'll bottom them out. Um, I'll take this uh, compression nut, clean it up. I'll heat it up, get it to expand, and it'll slip right down onto the top of the bearings. I'll put it in the press when it's still warm, and I'll put a load on it to get a nice preload on it, and then uh, then we'll be done. Then I'll have to press the cap back on. This goes on on top of there, and um. Yep, that goes on top of there. This press is on top of that. I took the measurement from the where the top of that coupler nut needs to be. And then we'll stick it back in the housing and everything. Well, let me back up. Once it's like this, we'll slip it into the housing, put the caps back on, and then we'll put the... Um, draw bar, collar, and um, drive nut on it. I'll take a picture of that too. So we'll see you in a little okay. bit. Okay, I pressed the bearings and uh, heated up the coupler, or that compression collar. Now I'm putting it into the casing. I'll throw it all the way in. And so that's that collar right there that I heated up and dropped on and pressed up and she sounds pretty good. Um, oops. At this stage, I'll be putting on this cap on the front, this cap on the back. Uh, I did mark orientation on everything to the housing, um, just for argument's sake. Put it back the same way I put it, took it apart. Um, and then I'll do another video showing how the end looks once we get back there. All, all right, right. well here we go. We got most of the spindle back together. It's all in the cartridge. We got uh, my little um, draw bar collar on. We pressed this uh, direct drive collar on. Their coupler goes in here and then it uh, mates up with the direct drive uh, on the spindle motor. Um, just as a note, there are set screws in here. Uh, I assume they are for when the factory uh, balances the spindle. Um, so they are bottomed out against the shaft. So this is pressed on here, but if those uh, set screws aren't backed off, it'll be a lot tougher. Um, what happened to me is, um, as you can see, my drawbar this we had to pound out of the spindle it was so rusted and corroded with dried up grease as I think I mentioned 
there is your little mister port right here that this little filter was in and it was so plugged up there was nothing going through there Let's see if I can get a steady picture for you um, I'm not putting it back in screw it um, so when we put this back in the head of the spindle this will go in and then once it's in there you'll have to have it orientated which you know like I said make your marks all the way around so you put it all in line this thing you'll have access to of a push to connect fitting um, to get your oil mister hooked up from the machine um, I got a brand new draw bar here that came in um, so I will install this down the middle um, the one thing to be careful of is here's the old one there are four ball bearings that go in here which engage your retention knob um, here's one of them um, this these ones are held in by grease right now so you got to make sure that they're in there and then you slowly work it down the middle of your spindle bore here um, we scrub the shit out of that or and so I will clean it up once more I'll probably stick another layer of grease on this uh, draw bore, get everything nice and clean so it slides in and out nice. I think that's what made these guys fatigue is because it was we were it was so much pressure getting pushed on it. Um, and that's what those pins will go into is this hole here to push down your draw bar uh, and disengage your retention knob and then ball bearings will fall into the sides of there um, otherwise that's pretty much it I'm gonna go ahead and get this draw bar in put my pins in here get the draw bar set and I'm gonna throw it back in the machine um, there is an o-ring around here which I got laying here I'll clean it up put it back on and um, We'll get her all lined up. One thing important to note, um, obviously, when you start putting it in the spindle, you get it nice and straight and kind of let it find its way home. But you got to orientate manually by the dogs here to get this to fit into the um, to the dogs of the spindle motor correctly. Otherwise, you'll be jamming stuff up. But I'll try to take a video of when I'm getting it ready to put it back in. All right, bye. Okay, here we are, getting ready to put this uh, thing back up in the spindle cartridge here. Um, these are, this is your little drive coupler that goes in here. It's hard to do with one hand. And then this is a little extension tube for your through the tool and air blow and all that other good stuff. Um, I'll clean this up quick and put a little bit of good of grease on it and everything and then uh, we'll get it ready to slide up into the spindle head. All right, stay tuned. Oh, one thing I'll say is I got the pins installed all ready to go and the draw bars in. So, all right. All right, back. Uh, as you can see, I got the spindle in the, the cartridge. And uh, probably can't see right here. I used a kind of some wood, guided it up, and then I used a longer bolt as kind of a, you know, when it was down further. And this o-ring in here, I, w I made sure it was in there. I had to kind of coax it in because it was a little bit uh, leached, a little oversized. Um, but we got it in there. Uh, I can freely turn the spindle and it registers an RPM. So that means it's, uh, it's mated with the motor and encoder. Um, so at this stage, I'm going to button it up. Um, there was a couple pieces of shim in there. I have those marked where they go. Um, I will put those shim in there um, and I'll tram the head and all that good stuff later. 
but um, at this stage I'll get it together I'll push crawl up there and put my push to connect fitting up there up in that hole uh, and I'll put the line back on and um, we'll turn the spindle on and see how it sounds and if it sounds good we'll uh, start the burning cycle so I think that's all I got right now all right all right <clears throat> We got it all tightened up, shimmed out, put the air on. Um, you can probably hear there is air coming out of the nose. Um, that happens on this is a 12,000 RPM um, spindle. Um, that does happen. Um, in hindsight, I don't recall getting air out of there before. But that's probably because that line was plugged because of that filter. Now we're getting good flow, air coming out of there when the spindle's on. Um, so that means we're getting good movement and hopefully the oil mist system will be working. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to run this through the spindle warm up, um, checking temperature so it doesn't get excessive. Um, if it's if it's uh, basically if we preload those bearings too tight um, we'll create heat and it'll prematurely uh, burn out our bearings so uh, hoping we did it right um, one thing to note <clears throat> um, the tool change we have a double arm tool changer here the spindle most likely will not be orientated properly anymore um, actually that one looks pretty good but basically what I'll do is I'll manually go in and I'll bring this tool changer arm over and check for height and check for orientation to orientate on the notch on the tool arm so do not do not change a tool if you ever are brave enough to do this unless you know how to adjust your Z height and your tool orientation of the spindle which is there's settings and offsets and stuff like that but I mean that's that's not for me to get into I think Haas has that on their DIY um, site so um, just to reiterate that again do not change a tool until you check orientation and your spin spindle height with the tool um, I'm gonna get this burning in and then uh, Hopefully everything will work out and I'll button it back up and uh, we'll be good to go. All right.